In today's Leeds news video, Under-21s back in action. Junior Firpo's career at Leeds could be coming to an end. This season, slightly better than last season. Ilian Melier links with Chelsea. Brendan Aronson's form discussed by Jesse Marsh. And the 49ers takeover deal could be hijacked by Middle Eastern interest. Hey folks, Jer here at The View on Friday, last video of the week, and there's some hot topics to get into and some small stuff to get into as well. Um, just a little bit of an update before we get started. There will be a live stream on this channel tonight, um, and I'm delighted to say that um, Joe from the Just Joe Show will be joining us as well, and Ollie Ward from Ollie's channel will be coming over as well to have a discuss about January Window. We spoke with the American and Leeds podcast guys last week about the transfer window, and then we want to kind of get a different insight from uh, other YouTube contributors that are out there, so I'm delighted to say the guys will be joining us at 7.30 tonight on the channel. Right, let's crack on and let's get into this then. We'll start off with the under-21s, and for anyone who is interested in, the under-21s are back in action tonight against Nottingham Forest. The game takes place at Meadow Lane and will kick off at 7pm. It is live on LUTV. You have a choice then. You can watch LUTV, you can watch us. <laughs> it can, it's up to you. Um, the next one, next story, just to move on to then and get into the meet your stuff is um, Junior Firpo and a couple of uh, publications are talking about the fact that Junior Firpo's time at Leeds could be coming to an end. The player has been unfortunate to set himself into any kind of permanent role within the Leeds team due to either injuries or form and he's found himself in these positions. Um, but according to a couple of places, Leeds are now looking at AZ Alkmaar left back Milos Kerkes. Kerkes is a Hungarian international who is roughly rated in and around a £15 million price mark. Um, and according to these sources, Leeds and talk sport are the main stuff, so there's a pinch of salt in this. According to them, they're saying that Leeds are amongst three Premier League clubs that are interested in the left-back. Leeds continue to be linked with left-backs, despite the fact they brought in Max Vober. And Vober has been said that he would play as a left-back. I have my, my, my own theory about this. I think he's been signed as a centre-back, if I'm being honest. Um, Leeds continue to be linked with left-backs, so there's, maybe there's some smoke there. Um, speaking then about Kirkes, and he was at AC Milan and left AC Milan only in the summer to move to Alkmaar, uh, AZ Alkmaar. Has had a very good season there and has been looked at by multiple sources and multiple clubs about a move. It will be a £15 million bid if Leeds want to get him away. You would imagine Alkmaar will not want to sell a player they've only just bought already. It will all depend on money, I'm assuming, and then what kind of money Leeds have to spend or the willingness of Leeds to spend. Uh, the next one's an interesting one. We're moving on to this season versus last season. Are we in a better position this year than we were last year? Well, uh, according to Tom Carnduff on Twitter, who is works with Sporting Life and Info Goal app, uh, and Tom has done a lovely little uh, tweet out this morning which shows last season versus this season. And if you look at it this way, you can see it on screen now. 2021-2022 season, Leeds had three wins, 16 points with 17 goals. 22-23, we've got four wins, 17 points and 25 goals. So an increase in the amount of goals. Our XG has also improved from 20.9 last year to 25.5 this year. Our goals aggregate is one less than last year, but we're scoring more. And our XG is slightly better. And goals against, our XG against is 31.2 from last year versus 32.4. And you can see the issues with that. Leeds are scoring plenty of goals this year. We are have a better conversion rate on our XG. However, we are conceding more goals and conceding more chances. And that is the, the top and tail story of Leeds' season. About great going forward, creating lots of chances, scoring lots of goals, conceding too many at the back, causing too many problems, making too many mistakes. So, uh, nice little thing done by Tom. If you want to have a little look and see about this year versus last year. Jesse came in in February last year. Gives you an idea where we are. Have we made progress? Very slight. Very slight progress. Um, more needed. Let's move on and talk about some players and potential outgoings. And Ilian Melier, Chelsea are said to again have registered their interest in the player this time. And according to Football France News, Chelsea have made a formal approach to Leeds in terms of expressing an interest in signing the player. They're amongst three teams said to be interested in Melier right now. Bayern Munich and Newcastle are also said. And you would imagine Newcastle's interest in him has only gone up after his performance against Newcastle last week. Uh, it's interesting, Melier has made 89 appearances for Leeds. He's already ranked as 44th in the all-time save lifts in the Premier League after for only three seasons so it says two things one he's a very good shot stopper but two there's too many shots getting being hit at him so that's always a problem uh, it'd be interesting to see Todd Bowley has this lovely arrogance about him when he said last week about Arsenal trying to buy Mudrick is whatever you pay for him will blow you out of the water so if Leeds want to make big money uh, on a player Emelie has time he's got time on his contract he's got time on his, on his age they want him they can pay big money for him so uh, tough to get big money for um, 
goalkeeper though so we'll have to wait and see um, hopefully he goes nowhere I, I think it's a big mistake if Leeds let him go anytime in the next two years and need to hang on to him for a bit longer I would be improving his contract and giving him a longer contract if I was Leeds um, we'll move on slightly then and let's talk briefly about Brendan Aronson's form and, and since coming back I personally thought Brendan Aronson was probably one of our better players leading into the World Cup break outside of maybe one performance where he was a little bit off his energy his pressing his work rate all that stuff his ability to entice fouls um, have been brilliant um, but since coming back from the World Cup, he's not been himself. He's had a couple of shaky performances. Obviously, he was at fault, partially at fault, uh, with the pass for um, the goal during the week with West Ham. And Jesse Marsh has been speaking about it, but it does look like uh, Aronson's confidence has taken a bit of a hit from spending a lot of time on the bench. And if you think about it this way, the players that went to the World Cup for Leeds played, except for Aronson, who sat on the bench and that was, was limited to a couple of substitute appearances. The lads that stayed had behind closed door friendlies and then the other friendly matches and we got back to work on stuff and their sharpness was there. Brendan's come back in and he looks like he's missing the preseason. It looks like he needs a bit of sharpness and a bit of game time, but his confidence in his head has clearly dropped a little bit. He's got an awful lot of abuse online, which I think is completely uncalled for for a man of his age, 22 years of age. Um, not only has he been expected by Leeds to be a player in the team, he's been expected by Leeds to be an important player in the team. And it's a huge amount of pressure, plus the the... the the fee that's sitting on his shoulders. And I think up until now, he's really handled it really well. He's going through a bit of a bit of a dodgy patch and it happens with young people. And you've got to be patient with this. But what Jesse Marsh said to say about this and about the mistake is the following. He said, I hugged him when he came off the pitch and I went to him after the match. I feel for him right now because for whatever reason, he's a little bit down and you could see it. He also went on to say that Aronson is a player who puts a huge amount of pressure on his own shoulders and wants to perform at the highest level. And Jesse wants him to be more of a more aggressive player in the park. He needs to fill out just a little bit as well for me. But that's, again, 22 years of age. That's going to happen in the next two to three years with him. So you hope that this is only a temporary thing. What he needs is the fans in the stadium, the fans online to get behind him and not be having a pop at him. He's had a bit of a bad run, but he's not a bad player and he's got to be a big player. You look at managers like Jurgen Klopp outright state that they think the player is going to be a star and are keeping an eye on him. That says something. These are people who actually know what they're talking about when it comes to football, outside of a couple of people's opinion on Twitter who aren't involved in football. So, um, yeah, I would take my, my, my stare from somebody who's far more educated on the game, and if he thinks he's a star, he's going to be a star. So let's get behind him. Let's give the guy a boost. He needs it right now. And then we move on to the last story, and the main story of today, which relates to the 49ers takeover deal. Uh, and according to the Mail Sport, so again, take this with a massive pinch of salt, a third party from the Middle East is looking at hijacking the deal. Uh, it's interesting to see the 49ers have a deal in place, an agreement in place with Leeds for a full takeover in 2024. And you would imagine that it's impossible for anybody else to come in and break that. Apparently not the case. Apparently there is a possibility. Rather than he could sell just his shares to this organisation, which would make them the majority shareholders of Leeds. And then they could look at buying out the 49ers over time. We don't know who the Middle Eastern group is. Let's just hope it's not GFH Capital. But it's um, it has come out since then. And also bear in mind, Radrazani spent a bit of time over in the Middle East, especially in Qatar over the World Cup as well. So it'll be interesting to see there what happens. Um, but apparently, according to Maya Plus, there has been interest, there has been talks. It's an unnamed group with little amount of detail so far and no formal bid has been put in place just yet. Takeovers do take time. There's always that in the initial interest and there's due diligence that has to be done before you then have to go through a process of freeing up cash and money to do it and buy those shares. And we'll have to see what happens. I think if Leeds want to compete at the top level of the Premier League, something like this is going to need to happen. If we want to be a Middle Eastern nation buying Leeds or not, you know, our, our moral compasses will get, will get quite skewed on this. Uh, personally, I would like to see Leeds go the right way about it. I would like to see the 49ers deal take over and then see who they can push Leeds on and then maybe another buyout in a couple of years' time. Um, but that's not a guarantee to happen um, if we want to get where we want to get to and if we want to get there quickly unfortunately it looks like you have to be owned by a, a Middle Eastern nation to get there and uh, I was on Just Joe's uh, stream last night and there was a good discussion about this as well on that channel you can check it out as well if you want to check that out but there was uh, an interesting discussion about this of where our moral compasses would lie on this you know it's an interesting one um, but that's it. And um, we will be back tonight, as I said, folks, 7 30 pm tonight on the channel live stream. Uh, with myself, Joe from Just Joe, and Ollie Ward from Ollie's channel as well. We'll be joining us. I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, and fingers crossed I get to see you there. There'll be a link shared on the community tab in a bit later on today, closer to, to seven o'clock. So um, fingers crossed I'll see you there. If I don't, I will see you back here Monday morning for some more news. Have a great weekend and I'll see you then. Bye.